Hello, <coughs> uh, I'm Rory McCann. I'm here to talk to you about uh, a very long mapping project we did in Ireland. Um, this was supposed to be a talk between the two of us, um, myself and Dave Corley, who has been unable to attend Sodom due to work uh, commitments, unfortunately, but I'm sure he's looking at the video stream if it's all working, um, and along with, I'm sure, many other people in Ireland. <clears throat> so, uh, one, one thing I didn't mention, uh, when I'm talking about Ireland here, it's, it's a project we did both in, in Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland, so it's a, it's a cross, um, cross Ireland, all Ireland thing. Um, so, oh, um, how do I page down? Oh, ah. Okay, so what we mapped were called townlands, and they are the lowest level of Ireland's administrative hierarchy. Uh, so we have the country, and then we have sort of provinces, four, and then we have counties, 32 in the entire island, and then a few bits others, and then we have townlands. Um, so they're tiny, because uh, Ireland's not a very big country, and there's 60,000 of them or so. Um, we mapped them as admin level 10. Um, so they're, they're very small and they're very old. Um, there's like legends uh, that were written down, folk tales about a thousand years ago that mention um, some of the townlands that are currently existing uh, now. I was trying to find an image of like, oh, this is book and then this is OSM relation, whatever, but I can't read old Irish, so uh, I wasn't able to do that. Yeah. So why did we map them? Um, this is an OpenStreetMap conference. Why wouldn't you map something? There's other reasons aside from that. Addresses. Has anyone looked at Irish addresses? They're horrible. Um, we now have postcodes. Um, we now have postcodes, sort of, which are also in a very sort of stupid, closed way that is not help for OSM. But a lot of Irish addresses, especially in rural areas, don't use street names or street numbers. It's kind of, the postman knows where I live. That's, that's literally the government plan. So people use these townlands as part of their addresses. We map them in OSM. We're able to do better address geocoding in rural Ireland. Um, another reason to map them is they're the lowest level, as I said, of Ireland's administrative hierarchy. So it means other admin boundaries are made up of them. Um, but like legally, so it'll be like the constituency of whatever is based on townlands, da 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 da. Uh, and now we can map constituency boundaries and things like that. Um, electoral divisions are used by the European Statistics Agency. Um, so we can now use that data. A lot of Irish government sort of open data, they'll open things, but they won't open the geographic data. So they'll open, you know, census results keyed off EDs, but you need to know where the EDs are. Um, they're also quite useful for historical and heritage reasons. They're very old. They're not re I mean, they're used in addresses, but they're, they're not really used in terms of like census results or anything like that now, but they used to be. Um, so you can get a lot of um, census results from Ireland from like the late 19th century, once countries started actually doing censuses, um, and they'd be sorted based on either townland or civil parish or things like that. Um, so there's a large Irish diaspora of people in America, UK, everywhere really, uh, who are descended from Irish people and they want to find out more about their Irish history, and now they can. Um, Funny example there, as I said, they're very old, uh, and part of the history they serve is a description of the place. There was one called Pass If You Can, which used to be used for highway robberies. It's like, well, you can go through here if you can, but I wouldn't, it's a bit dodgy. Um, so that's why, so what can we do? There isn't really any open data we can use. Uh, at least there wasn't at the start. There isn't really any now. Well, there is now because we've mapped it, but there, was, there wasn't anything from the governments. Um, so what did we do? So they're, they're not mapped, obviously, there's no like signposts really, but it's, you can see hedges and things like that, so we need to trace. Um, most maps now don't show them, they're very tiny, so you can't show, like you couldn't have like an A4 map of Ireland and see them because it'd be just too small. 
Um, so they don't show them now, but they used to. And they were used for tax. 19th century British tax records were useful. <laughs> They're good for something. So in the mid, well, early to mid 19th century, um, the Ordnance Survey, so Ireland was part of the UK then, um, the Ordnance Survey in the UK mapped Ireland for tax purposes and to do social welfare things and calculating rates. Um, and they made some great maps, six inches to the mile, one to 10,000 maps of the entire country over a period, obviously, of decades because it was the 19th century. Um, they showed town and borders and, obviously, copyright has expired on these maps. Um, oh, yeah, so it was a long time ago. You might think they're not very useful, but, um, you know, the population's actually gone down since then because there was a famine. Um, and, yeah, Ireland was probably really, really well mapped compared to most other countries. So this is what the maps look like. The red is the, um, is the town and border. Um, and this is zoomed in, but it's got this lovely sort of 19th century cartography style going on with its kind of washed out uh, peachy color thing. And yeah, it's lovely looking maps. It'd be great if we can copy them. Um, you might notice the watermark. <laughs> so one problem with the maps is there are lots of them, obviously one to 10,000. Um, so there's about 2,000 pieces of paper that are about, you know, yay big, massive, because it was 1843, they didn't have A4. So there isn't a lot of places that physically have these maps. Uh, and if they do, it's like, hey, you know those maps from 150 years ago? Can I just, can I just take them, and bring them home and, and do things? Um, they don't like that. The Ordnance Survey of Ireland uh, has some, obviously they inherited them, they've scanned them in, they've cropped them, they've rectified them, and they're on the web, Ooh. but they claim copyright. <laughs> so, poo, we can't use that. Um, so we need another source. There's a bit of a history here. Uh, this first edition was made, they made a second edition at some point, 1910s, they made uh, the third edition at one to 10,000, six inches in miles. Um, Ireland gets independence in 1922, World War II starts, the UK government is like, hey, there's that country over there that, you know, is on our side. What if they get invaded and we need to, you know, know what's going on there? So they reprojected them and made some new maps. So they took the, the maps from 1910 and reprojected them down four to one. Uh, and that's what they used. So they had that as paper. And then some libraries have those maps, which they have scanned in uh, and stuff. And they said, hey, <coughs> You, if you crop them, rectify them, and things like that, we'll let you scan from them, which is cool. Everyone wins. And, you know, they're like, yeah, you can make OSEM town lands and all that. So we used Map Warper to, uh, to scan them in. Um, lots of mapping. I, I saw on Twitter, uh, I think Tim was asking about disk space. It's, we've probably used a lot of that disk space. So, you know. So basically, we scanned, they were all scanned in by, by the university, and uh, we started cropping them and rectifying them, and we can map from them. So this is the six-inch map. This is what we had to deal with. It's um, monochrome. So you can see here, the red is the town and borders. Can you spot the town and borders here? They're actually there. You kind of develop a sense for these things. <laughs> you know, and eye strain. Um, so that's what we had. Well, it's all we had to work with, really. So we, uh, we worked with it. And we started mapping. And we kept mapping. Um, some things make this easier. Um, yeah, JOSM, Sleepy Map, Tenlands. So JOSM, we did basically all our mapping in JOSM. Because um, we had custom imagery from Map Warper layer thing. We had a preset for... Uh, um, like the, the tags, uh, and then we had a map style so you could see the map and see where it was. Multi-polygons all over the place, so uh, validator is good there. Um, so we used, someone set up um, maps.openstreetmap.ie, which showed the, it was a self-replicating, not self-replicating, uh, it, it was a tile server that updated every minute or whatever, uh, and would show us where the townlands are being mapped, uh, well, where they were, so you could see if they're being mapped, you know, it isn't showing up, you've broken your polygon, yada, yada, yada. 
um, I set up townlands.ie, which uh, just takes the OSM data and just displays it as like an interactive sort of web database thing, um, which is useful for people to know about townlands, but then it also has things like um, uh, like a progress report. So I basically counted how much of each county was done and how long, you know, at this rate we'll be finished in, sometimes it was, <laughs> I actually ran into problems that, that Python's date library won't let you get dates beyond the year 10,000. So um, it, it was taking a while for a while because it was slow. Uh, Dave, my co-host, who is here in spirit, made some great videos uh, explaining video series just exactly what to do. Uh, just stepped, you know, walked through all the steps about what was happening and how you could map and how you could contribute and uploading the sheets, rectifying them, mapping, yada, yada, yada. This was great because um, he did that, published it out, and then a few people went, oh, that's interesting, I'm going to start mapping now that I know how to do and I can see what to do. Um, so a lot of people came out of the work for that. Um, yes, so... That's how we're mapping. Um, once we have the data, we can build other administrative boundaries. We can map all the things. Um, some of the other high-level ones, both historic and non-historic, civil parishes uh, were from the Church of Ireland, sort of like Church of England, but in Ireland. Um, no longer the state religion as of 1871. Um, not really used for, tac for modern purposes now. Well, unless you're in the Church of Ireland, I'm not sure, maybe it's changed. Anyway, civil parishes use a lot for genealogy uh, purposes um, and records, so again, you can search based on that. Baronies, counties are split into baronies, not really used, but hey, barons. Um, electoral divisions are one of the big ones, they're admin nine, and they are, um, as I said, used for constituencies, used for census results and things like that. Um, and uh, statistics, both at a national and European level. So now that we have that, we can now make an open data version of, uh, of this data set that, that people can then use. You don't have to go to um, OSI. So um, we started many years ago, and there are lots of them. There's about 60,000. Um, the, 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 the earliest currently existing townland was from June 2010. I think <laughs> Germans might have added one earlier, but uh, yeah, so six years. This is who mapped them. The area is how much each person has mapped. It's a bit unequal. Um, so we have like 50% are from top three mappers. Um, as I said, some people really came out of the woodwork and really just started mapping. Um, here is where people mapped. So. Um, it's colored based on, on, on where mapped. You can see it's, people basically picked the area they knew, mapped it, and just went out. Um, so you can see people had their areas where they started and where they, they worked, because they wanted to maintain, like, oh, I want to get, you know, go away, it should be really good, so I'm going to map it. Um, yes, local, local mapping spread out, and so forth. Who's mapping? Um, mostly men. <laughs> so not so great, not diversity aspect. Good age, age bracket though. Um, you know, when people in their 70s are, are, are using JOSM to map townlands, that's pretty cool. Um, again, because these things have been around so long that they are used by, um, they've been around so long, so they're like just from a historical and heritage aspect. Uh, and some people went to like historical society and said, hey, this, this thing, these are these townlands, this is OpenStreetMap, this is something that you might be interested in. Um, I don't know if you can see that. Uh, this, is, this is the rate of mapping, it's from that um, OSM tag stat thing. Um, so this is 2014. You can really see things took off. Uh, I think it was around here. Dave did his videos, and um, and you can see just a large constant rate of mapping uh, up to about here, where it just stopped because we're done. Um, this is the this is the maps that done on uh, OpenStreetMap.ie, and it's all about had many years of seeing not much grey on this map. Um, okay, we've mapped them with relations, and there's now oodles and oodles of tiny, tiny relations all over Ireland. If you're in Ireland and mapping, watch the relations. Um, so, it takes a long time, but you can do it. In 2010 or so, it looked impossible. You gotta have the tools out there. Um, a lot of it's made by, as I said, small number of people, but you need to basically cast a wide net to find those people. You know, if you can get 10 new people interested and one of them turns out to be someone who maps a lot, you know, you've, you've, you've got your, your mapping. Um, so you need to make it accessible to everybody. 
some of the thanks to obviously some of the libraries that helped us with scans and with maps. Uh, and um, in Trinity College and Oxford, who provided some um, missing bits that Trinity didn't have, Map Warper for the rectification, and then um, Blueprint, who uh, helped us scan in some of the physical maps we did actually have, thanks to the governments of Ireland and Northern Ireland, who decided, hey, open data is nice, let's release townland data, either sort of an open license, somewhat generalized in, in, one, in some cases, they mapped them just before, they released it just before we finished, which was great. Wasn't that nice? I think, I think Northern Ireland government released it literally within a week of it being finished in Ireland, in, in Northern Ireland. Uh, so what are we going to do next? We are going to, um, we now have something we can use for open data purposes. Uh, we can improve and have improved other boundaries. We're going to donate the images back to the um, libraries and we are going, we're now trying to match up um, official Irish name, Irish names of, you know, from the Irish language uh, of places and match that it to OSM. And that's the end. Oh dear God, those are maps. Um, yes, and I have one image you can see which mm -hmm, Colin did this literally yesterday as a gif. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's start again. So this, this, I don't know if you can read the, the dates, but so 2011, this is each townland being mapped. 2012, 2013, it took a long time. 2014, yay, stuff starts kicking off. Uh, finished. Yes, so, any questions? No questions. I just have to ask this. Uh, are they all marked with Wikidata IDs? <laughs> I don't know. Um, one interesting point is Wikipedia article on Townlands was updated by someone, I don't know who, um, with the size of, of, uh, of the largest townland, and the previous source was a book from 1860s, and the new source is OpenStreetMap. So it is used. Um, I don't know if they're in with data. Hey, it's, you can download the data. You can import it. You can import it. So, so is it the case that the boundaries of the townlands haven't actually changed in those 200 years or whatever? Um, usually not, no. Uh, there's some cases where a lake would have dived up or something like that, no. or a, a coastal reclamation. Um, basically not, no. I mean, there's... No. <laughs> so, so, they, so they change the larger entities by changing which townlands are included rather than by um, actually changing the boundaries of the townlands at all? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or, or like within, within a city, they might go, it goes along this road until this mm -hmm. corner and then turns left or something like that. Um, the townlands, I think, did change a bit between the first and the third edition, so they were only in the last 100 years. Mm -hmm. um, but no, no, otherwise there for about a thousand years or so. People probably thought it would be bad luck. First, firstly, absolutely outstanding project. Uh, we were once involved in looking at the dresses in Ireland and we knew what an incredible mess it was. <laughs> and, and our code is doing not much more than adding to that mess. You've created something that is genuinely useful. So congratulations. I think that is fantastic. Thank you. Uh, I was going to ask the same question as the previous speaker, which is, do they really, really not change? Uh, so what happens if you have developments that uh, put buildings across townland boundaries? Do are there buildings that traverse uh, townland boundaries, or is that legally impossible? Oh, no, there's no legal reason that it would be banned. And yes, that does happen. Um, so obviously in, in, in like Dublin sprawl or in the cities have sprawled uh, and you can, what used to be fields were not anymore. Um, so in that case, we basically just mapped what was there before. Um, they're not used, I mean, they're, they're used a lot, but they're, they're not really used in the kind of, uh, like you can't map, you can't build across them because I mean, some of them would be the size of this room, for example, you know. Um, it, a lot of the time we used um, like 
hedges in farms. I mean, it, it's similar to England in, in the sense you've loads of little fields all over the place and uh, they've been made up of that. So yeah, in like 99% of the time they haven't changed. If you look, there's an, there's an airport in, in Ireland in the west coast about here uh, and that obviously used to be farms and they just built the airport so I mapped all the townlands in exactly and it goes across runways and stuff and it's quite funny. Um, do you have any idea if uh, mapping all the townlands was uh, a factor in getting it released as open data? If oh, um, and if uh, having all the open street map mappers map that kind of stuff was also instrumental in opening more than just the townlands. If, well, so I didn't hear the second part of. If, if it helped change the minds uh, to that, oh, oh we uh, should open this stuff. I don't know. Um, the Irish government had been playing around with open data for a while, so it, it, it's not like it wasn't out of the blue, it was like, oh, we've released another thing and it sort of is this. Um, but I, I don't know if it was, if it was used by that. I... Oh yeah, it probably existed beforehand. I mean, like, the, the, you know, releasing it like a week after we finished, governments don't move that fast. Like, you know. <laughs> Not Irish governments. <laughs> Lunchtime. So, any remaining question? No? Sure? Okay, well, then I think we can thank again our speakers for the three presentations right now.